Hi, Scizorin here with another episode of Path of Exo University. This is coming up right before 3.15 uh, Expedition League. So uh, this is not the most basic PUE University episode. We do have, if you're like completely new, new Path of Exile, we do have a PUE 101, which tackles that. This is going to be slightly more advanced. It's going to cover things like local versus global, increased, reduced, more or less, um, how to read weapons, how to read skill gems, passives and skill tree, ascendancies, ailments, um, and this will be on the test. There's no test at the moment. We're working on stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it'll be very, very dense with information, and uh, there, there's a lot to take in here. And uh, obviously, there's a very, very big difference between like increased and more in Path of Exile, so we're going to cover things like that. So, local and global are used to tell you if a modifier on an item affects only the item or your character as a whole. So, sometimes it will tell you that it is global, but there are other times with, for example, an amulet where it will just say increased energy shield and it would say it would look very similar on a chest but the chest would be local and the amulet would be global so we're gonna go into that a little bit too um so a global modifier does not directly modify the stats of the weapon or the armor visibly so obviously like an amulet that has a 16 percent increased energy shield it doesn't have any energy shield on the amulet itself that can be increased and uh, usually if a modifier changes color of a stat, so if it goes from white to blue, then it is being changed by a modifier on the item and generally means that it is local. The local modifier will modify a line of the item or show another change on the item with an equal magnitude. And the local modifier affects skills and actions that you do with the item itself. So a really, really easy thing to confuse here is if we have, for example, a, um, a dagger or a wand with say 80% physical damage, right? Increased 80% physical damage. When you're new to Path of Exile, it's very easy to think, hey, this might be really good for my Blade Blast build. That uses physical damage. That is in fact local. And obviously this is a big pain to understand when you're new to Path of Exile, because it isn't that easy to understand what is local and what is global. And the global modifiers affect all the actions that you do, and uh, only if the action or skill can use the global stuff. We have some examples here. Um, all modifiers which modify the item uh, are local. So, and we can see here that like these would, on a completely normal white carnal armor, these would be white. And the fact that they have like, they are blue means that they are being um, modified here. And these are local stats. Like all my energy shield isn't being boosted by 118%. And then you can see the quality here. Like everything here is local to the item basically. Uh, lightning rest, dex, mana, and stun and black recovery are not showing up on the item and are global. So, like, the lightning resist, you know, goes onto your character. Um, there are exceptions, mainly with accuracy and influence gear, but they are rare and usually simple to figure out. So, for example, yeah, like, if you have 450 accuracy on a weapon or 450 accuracy on a ring, that doesn't matter. We also have increased, reduced, more and less. And these are very, very important in Path of Exile. And uh, I remember one of the easiest examples in older Path of Exile, which was like, uh, so this is something that's gotten better over time, but it used to be more confusing. For example, melee physical, right, would be something like 45% more, but then fortify used to be like 40% increased or something like that, and giving you the fortify effect. So a lot of people would be like, why would we ever use melee physical? And that, even back then, is because of that big difference in more uh, versus increase. And um, a good way to look at this is uh, that increase is additive and more is multiplicative. And uh, often people call it path of multipliers because that's all you really want in Path of Excel is just to get as many multipliers as you possibly can. So if something states increases and reductions apply to X, it means only increases and reductions. Um, so for example, a, a great example of that, just to like give you guys something visual, uh, is Spiritual Aid, a very, very complicated node in Path of Exile. And basically what it does is increases and reductions to minion damage also affect you. Now, I've seen some players that are new to the game take Spiritual Aid, but they're trying to use minion damage support. That doesn't work because minion damage support gives us more damage and not increased. 
um, increases and reductions are added together. And uh, yeah, it's just additive and, and stuff like that. So that's pretty simple. And technically, just to like explain it even more, if you like at the start when you're like just starting a character, 10% increased is the same as 10% more because you don't have any other multipliers, right? That's why um, these damage nodes at the start make a very, very big difference at the start. So let's say you could start with like a few increases. You wouldn't notice a big difference between elemental overload and, you know, 40% increase. Um, it's more about when you have multiple points coming together and multiplying off each other. That's when it becomes really, really strong. And that's why you'll also see at the end game, we'll have some characters and you might not feel like they have that much more gear than you. And you might be sitting on like 500,000 damage or a million damage and they might have 20 to 30. Uh, and it's because it's very, very... Um, there's a word that I always forget. It, it goes like this. It starts on C, maybe? It, it, I always forget this word. Exponential. Search on E. Uh, it's very exponential. Um, so, yeah. More and less are multiplied together. More is positive and less is negative. So, let's say that a skill gem grants a 100 damage and you get an additional 50 damage from gear. We now have 150 base damage, right? We have 150, 100, 85, and 80% 80 increased. We have 30 and 60% reduced. This looks like an actual math problem, you know? It's very, very complicated stuff. And and this is just to give a more in-depth example. You can zone out here if you hate math and stuff like that. And, and this is how the math would look. It would be the base damage times that, and then minus, um, and we, with the, the final outcome is that we have 637.5 damage. So you can see, uh, add all the increases, subtract all the reductions, and multipliers are just so incredibly strong, and it just skyrockets your damage. And now, if we get, um, 30% more and 40% more, you can see here that it multiplies by 1.3 and multiplies by 1.4. And then multiplies by the 0 0.8, which is like, you know, that's why getting 20% less damage might not seem like a lot, but it is a shit ton. Uh, and we end up with 928 damage. So, to sum up, stack everything, like more, like the more more, the more more multiplier you can get, the more better. Um, and it's generally always better than increased. Uh, there is no like... Like, there is no, um, like, 100% increase is the same as 10% more. It obviously depends on what else you have. It's just generally always good. More gooder to get as much more as you can. More more is win. Uh, and always avoid less. Uh, generally will uh, hurt you quite a lot. Let's talk a little bit about reading weapons. And um, it can be pretty, pretty complicated to understand how everything works in Path of Exile. But all weapons can be used to attack. And that means that all weapons have attack stats, attack stats, even things like a wand. And sometimes you don't want them, right? Sometimes you want a dagger to be used entirely for spellcasting purposes or a wand to be used entirely for spellcasting purposes. And that can make them harder to roll. And some of the stats, like I gave the example of the physical damage, might seem like it might be good for your spell, but it is a local. And there are other stats too, where it'll say like 30 to 70 fire damage. And that's another common mistake that new players do, where I've seen loads of new players uh, maybe run a fireball build and they have loads of like 50 to 70 fire damage. So like a, a quick example of a, of a wand would be something like 50 to 70 fire damage um, and then 60% fire damage. So they're basically running around with a one stat item uh, often. So that can be very, very um, easy to fuck up. So there are some pure melee weapons. So axes, swords, and maces and claws, they only roll attack mods uh, naturally. We can bypass that by essences, but if you are crafting it regularly, it cannot roll 60% spell damage. There are some hybrid melee weapons like scepters, daggers, and staves that can roll both modifiers and wands as well. Um, there are some daggers that are pure attack daggers, but then rune daggers can roll spellcaster ones as well. So. Do make sure you pay attention if it's a rune dagger, if it's a war staff, stuff like that, because you could be wasting currency crafting a staff that can't even hit spell modifiers. Scepters are generally considered maces, which can roll caster modifiers. So they're just harder to roll. 
Um, wands are a projectile attack and caster weapon and can roll both attack and spell modifiers. And the convoking one can also roll minion modifiers. So that one's very, very unique. And bows, they're ranged projectile attack weapons. They can only roll attack modifiers. And there are some cases for advanced crafting where we can use that to our advantage as well. Gem modifiers have their own tags and restrictions. And uh, it's always important to look at the top of the gem, what like tags they have. You can learn a lot from that and what like you can use to scale your build. But um, we can see plus level of socketed bow gems is considered an attack and gem modifiers, but it is restricted to bows only. And then plus one level of socketed gems is considered only a gem modifier. And because of that, it can be force rolled with cannot roll attack modifier benchcraft. And um, that means you can have an open suffix, have an open uh, prefix, do cannot roll attack mods. And if you exalt, you get guaranteed plus one level of socketed gems. And that's very, very strong. That's how we can easily make plus three bows. Uh, which is really good for things like damage over time bows, sometimes explosive arrow or elemental hit whenever they're in favor. And uh, let's look a little bit more about reading items and stats and uh, implicit. Here we have a Karoo Chopper and we have an Imbued Ones. We see like the different attack stats. So weapons are very, very different from spellcasting in the sense that you can see that the base crit is on the weapon. So we see here that a Karoo Chopper has a 5% crit, Imbued One has a 7% crit. So crit is um like let's say that i'm using cyclone now right cyclone doesn't have its own crit like freezing pulse has like six percent crit or five percent crit uh, and it has that as its own base crit and the way that works is um that you can increase this uh by getting for example 37 percent increased critical strikes on the crew chopper and this the base crit will go up and that's how we scale crit in the game um same with like the attack speed everything is like based on the weapon so um, damage, speed, crit chance, and range, and that only affects attack. If I'm, like, for example, wielding a career chopper and casting Bladefall, none of these stats are going to translate into my Blade Blaster Bladefall. And the implicit is unique to the base type, and all items with the same base type have the same implicit, unless you corrupt it away. Remember, you can't change much after you've corrupted. You can change colors and sockets and fusings through your crafting bench, but you can't, like, use orbs on the craft. You can see that the imbued wand here has 36% increased spell damage as is an implicit, and this can be changed with blessed orb, similar to two stone rings, ruby rings, etc. Oops. Now most items have an implicit, which can make them a very, very good base type. And we have, for example, Stygian Vices is a really, really good belt. Uh, very, very popular. So here we can see that quality only affects the attack stats of the item. Harvest have enchants and heist as well. They can change this. For example, that for 8% quality, you get one more AOE. Uh, and you can see here that the physical damage has turned blue because of the quality and same on the career chopper. It's so warm today. I'm like dying here, even with every window open. Rating items and weapons. So physical damage affects the attack stats and this is local to the weapon. And uh, we can see loads of things here on the right. We can see that the physical damage is blue. We have the elemental damage here. This is like yellow for the lightning. And we can see that the attack speed has changed the attacks per second to be um, 167 and it's blue. And uh, this is also local on the weapon. So this lightning damage would not work on spells. Even though it says elemental damage, it's lightning. It's not like, yeah. Uh, and, it would probably be easier if Path of Exile changed this to say two attacks. That would probably be better because I think it's very complicated that it says two spells and this one just says damage. Um, spell stats are either global or state. Um, so here we have like 15 to 31 fire damage, two spells. 77 increased fire damage will affect uh, all fire damage and not just spells for attacks specifically. So that is global. So whether you would be using Molten Strike or Fireball, they would be working on both. There are local attack stats that can also be Elemental or Chaos. So 25% increased Chaos damage is global and will not directly increase the damage of the weapon, but the total amount of Chaos damage you deal instead. Um, but we but we do have like flat Chaos damage here, and that's if you're attacking with the weapon. 
Critical strength chance is always local if it's pressed on a weapon. And uh, there is some weapons that would have like critical strength chance with spells instead. We also have stun duration, which is global. And um, then we have global, global critical strength chance, which is different. Very, very different than local. There are no local stats on this one. All the stats on this is global. So we'll look through it a little bit. And uh, physical damage of the attack stats portion is only highlighted because the quality is above zero. So the spell damage, global. The cold damage, global. And this spell damage is actually a hybrid mod. Sometimes you wouldn't be able to have spell damage and cold damage because they're the same type of modifier. Uh, same, you wouldn't have, be able to have cold and fire. You would have to have um, a suffix or a hybrid mod. There are like cold suffix mods as well. Uh, the lightning damage of spells, also global, and then the cast speed is global. It's important to read every part of the gem. Tags tell you what type of skill it is and uh, compatibility with support gems. There are some tricks, like there are some skill gems where, for example, concentrated effect will not scale the gem. And I think it's very, very important to follow guides that try to explain these things when you're new. Because, um, well, for example, a good example is Bladefall Blade Blast. Path of Building would tell you that Concentrated Effect is the biggest damage modifier. Whereas Increased AOE, even though it doesn't give you damage, actually does give you damage. Because the way Blade Blast works is that each projectile will then have more of an overlap. And you get a sort of shotgun effect. Um, whereas, um, yeah, with, um, with tags and path of building and trying to figure things out yourself, that could be pretty complicated. So make sure you look into that and, and following guides is so important in the start uh, for these like less obvious things. Gems also have levels and they gain experience when you gain experience. And if you're leveling six gems in your offhand, all your gems are not leveling slower. So you should always be leveling as many gems as you can. Like they gain uh, gem XP equally and there's no penalty at all. So, uh, usage of stats of the gem will tell you what resource it wants to use. So, mana, life, range. And then the resource cost can also be altered via passives or support gems. So, for example, you can make things cost life instead of mana, etc. And uh, the change would only be um, shown on the skill bar itself. Like down here, it wouldn't be shown on the gem. So, let's say that I was using... Uh, Whatever the new blood magic is called, I can't remember. But let's say that we made this cost life instead. It would still say cost 16 mana. Because that's the base type. Or sorry, the base cost of Blade Blast at that level. It's not including all the support gems and stuff. Um, and then there is damage effectiveness. So effectiveness of added damage. This is a multiplier for all added flat damage you have in your gear, tree, and support gems. Um... So uh, we can we can use an example of Blade Blast here. This is an effectiveness added damage of 50%. That means that it's not necessarily as important to um, get a large amount of flat added physical. And we will see that lightning skills in particular have very, very low effectiveness of added damage. And then sometimes skills that might be like slower, like Fireball, Discharge, etc. have really, really high effectiveness of added damage. And that means getting like flat damage is like very very efficient on those skills on the right page yeah requirements of using the gem right we have levels and attributes and um that'll just show you like for example a level 20 gem would be level 70 to use and uh for for most skill gems like that are spells getting level 20 is a huge damage upgrade and uh a lot of new players might be thinking well how important can levels really be and going from level 17 to 20, which sometimes, especially on software, might only cost you 2 or 5 chaos, can be the same as going from a 5 link to a 6 link. And uh, sometimes even more than that. There's the description of the gem, which will contain important information. It'll tell you what the gem does, supported weapon types, like for example, some weapon skills are only able to use with swords, axes, etc. Then we have the level, level limitations of other gems. And, uh, like, for example, there are some things you won't be able to use with trigger gems, etc. And, uh, yeah, we'll uh, also, it'll show interactions with support gems. 
like what you can use to unleash with, etc. And also something that's important is that you can see, uh, if you see, I'll move it to here, and you guys should be able to see in the bottom right, you can see that, uh, we'll go to hide up. Oh, right. There, we'll put it here and go to hide out real quick. And just show you that the tags change when you put a support gem. So if I remove this now, you can see that one letter is disappearing. And then if this just wasn't appearing, let's say we'd like just put it in and it wasn't adding, that generally means that it doesn't work. So make sure you like take a look at the uh, the letters that get added. And then we have um, gem stats, which will show you base damage, damage over time, duration, size, range, and other stats that would modify the skill. And again, gem levels, super important. Um, some attacks will also do it, like Caustic Arrow, Toxic Rain, Elemental Hit is huge. Huge. Yeah, it also highlights around the gems. We can show that as well. So if we uh, hover over Blade Blast now, you can see that all the gems highlight. That means that they're like connected and working. Going from a level 18 Essence Strain to level 20 is 25% more damage. And generally, a rule of thumb, it's basically 12% more damage per gem level. There are some that are even stronger. Um, attack gems will sometimes get as little as 1% or 2%. So, very, very big difference. And for the end game, when you're like very, very juiced up, fully powered character, you can get fairly decently as high as 27, and that is 118% more damage. Um, again, like I said, having six gems in your offhand leveling is very, very important, especially if it's something you're going to be playing long term, because once your gem hits level 20, you can volley and hit a level 21. For the melee vol versions of their skills, they're usually also important, so level gems in your offhand for this purpose, like trying to get the vol equivalent, and there is like the Temple of Atsuidal where you can double craft a gem, getting it at a level 21 vol version. And auras are also pretty beneficial for this. Generally, most auras will give you 1% more damage at level 21, or a lot of them. And that, like, Path of Exile really adds up. So you're getting 1% you're getting more in 11 different places. You've basically gotten one more gem level. Right. Um, so, some examples of active gems here we have um cyclone and lancing steels and you can see like loads of different stats here we can see the tags at the top we have attack aoe movement channeling physical and melee really really um easy to read here so that means we can we can tell a lot from this like how we would scale uh and that obviously we want attack gems we can use aoe gems so both ink aoe conk effect would work on this the channeling skill, and the, we get so much information by reading this. Here we have attack, projectile, and physical. So obviously putting lesser multiple projectiles on Cyclone wouldn't do anything, but on Lancing Steel it would. And then we can see like what quality we'll give, and here we have Impale Effect, here we have AoE, and uh, yeah, it's important to read through the skill you're using. Here we have Arc, and Infernal Blow, Spell, Chaining, and Lightning. And um, Infernal Blow is attack, AoE, melee strike, and fire and duration. So it's a strike skill. It means we can use things like the Ancestral. Um, I don't remember the full name, Ancestral. The one that makes strike skills target two additional. It's not Ancestral Call, right? Maybe it is. Warm Day. Um, so, passive skill gems. Like active skill gems, they have gem tags to denote what they can support, and some support gems also list in the description what they can support. So for example, if they can't be used on channeling skills, if they can't be used on trigger gems, etc. No, not cry, that's a war cry. Um, I think it's just ancestral call. Maybe. All support gems will say support on them as a tag, and they will increase the mana cost or reservation of the skill. So if you put, for example, um, sometimes it's very easy to put Arcane Surge with auras, like maybe you'll have like Flame Dash, Arcane Surge, and an aura, and you might be wondering why you're, you're so low on mana. Linking auras around the support gems can make them unusable, because the support gems have high mana multipliers, and then a large portion of support gems are straight up damage buffs with the downside, limiting the usability on some builds. 
Um, some only have a positive effect, but it usually lowers the strength. And obviously, for example, control destruction is being massively changed. Like currently, nearly every build, even if it is crit, has uh, control destruction. That is most likely changing very much. We'll see like the final changes, but uh, well, control control might even be a dead gem. We don't really know anymore. Doesn't sound like you're going to be using it on crit builds anymore. Um, added fire damage support. Here we see that like, this doesn't have a downside. It's just that its physical damage is extra fire. It is fairly strong, but not as strong as, for example, Brutality, which is has a downside, but it is incredibly strong. Whenever you're doing a build that you're not doing any elemental damage, no chaos damage, and we still see people using it Zeri's Promise with this support gem. Um, that doesn't do anything. You're basically using a bad Amethyst Blast. But uh, yeah, still very, very strong to use Brutality. And we, I've seen people using Herald of Ash with Brutality as well. Very, very interesting. But uh, obviously, PoE is a very in-depth hard game. Here we can see Void Manipulation. This has the downside. Support of Steel Gems deal 25% reduced elemental damage, but 39% more Chaos damage. So if you're using Essence Drain or Blight, um, obviously very good because they don't have any elemental damage. We have added Chaos Damage here, which does flat damage. Let's look at passives on the skill tree. Passives are generally connecting nodes and can only be connected directly to other nodes. There are some special jewels that will, for example, let you select passives inside the radius or within uh, a ring-like structure. And uh, we have Scion that can start from two different locations on the skill tree. We have Notables. These are stronger than normal passives. So for example, Warrior's Blood here, that gives you not just 10 strength, but also 20 strength, stun threshold, and one point. 8% life regen instead of just the normal 10 strength. Uh, so they are generally stronger and uh, some of them can give for example 30 stats. We have uh, 20 life, 14 max life and loads of notables are incredibly strong or like plus power charges. Uh, we have uh, also things like you can apply an additional curse and notables can be anointed on your amulet. An anoint is basically that you get a notable like this without having to travel there. Passives on the skill tree. We have keystones. They are unique. They provide unique changes to your character or its skills. They can sometimes have a big downside as well. And um, you can only have one copy of a keystone allocated ever. For no reason can you have two of the same keystone. Uh, this would sometimes be obtainable with like the, the legion jewels, which will add keystones to your skill tree. That you can never have a keystone twice. It doesn't work. It is either on or off. Even if one is from the item, and like you can't have mind or matter twice, for example. Um, so, uh, for example, we have unwavering stance on Chrome's roots. If you take that on the skill tree and on Chrome's roots, you're just wasting a skill point. So. Ascendancy points are, uh, and the class itself is gained by completing each of the four labyrinths. You get two points from each one. Per difficulty per character. So um, if you want to respec as well, you can do that by having no points allocated and completing any lab. So you could go to the end of the easiest lab and chug a bunch of regrets at the end, unspec all your ascendancy points, and then click on the altar and it will let you switch. And trial completions are saved across all your characters in the same league, so you don't have to do the trials on every character. And each class except Scion has three ascendancy. And Scion has obviously King Combo. It's like Jack of all trades, master of none. These passives are reduced in power but allow for unique combinations. And generally, Scion is either completely busted or dog shit. Very rarely do we see some in between. There's been a few patches where it's been really good. For spellcasters and really garbage for melee but it's very very hard to balance ascendancy does not lock you into a certain playstyle but provides a clear method of scaling either offensive stats defensive stats or character stats like minions like minions for example on a duelist would be very hard to scale not only are you far away from the minion nodes but you don't get any benefit of your ascendancy so pretty hard in comparison to a necromancer Choosing ascendancies is mostly based on skill and defenses you want to use, and a guide would very clearly outline that. They are generally designed for one skill and one ascendancy, but some guides provide alternatives for a different feel or even a skill in the same category. Um, something I do in most of my guides, especially when suggesting a new skill, 
is uh, that I made sure to always create a backup. Sometimes a new skill is completely broken and you instantly love it, but there are times when you start using explosive ROF for big rework and path of building shows you're going to be doing 20 million damage and it ruins your entire league. So we always make sure that we have easy backups um, or I don't recommend them. Like a good example is Cracklands. was not as strong, but it was very easy for people to swap to either Arc or Bolt Lightning. Um, so we have Cyclone, like uh, Cyclone can be Slayer or Chieftain and cold or chaos damage over time with the cultists and trickster and sometimes it's very easy to swap between them and regret regretting ascendancy points is five regrets per point more in-depth explanation of what labyrinth is and how to unlock it you receive plus other handy tips on what to do in labyrinth can be found in the class labyrinth which is going to be after this with mr khan and uh, we also have a youtube video saying what the fuck is the labyrinth and um uh, it's honestly right now they made the lab so much better like the last patch not 3.15 but 3.14 chef's kiss beautiful they did such a good job with the lab it's actually fun to farm now um so ailments and ailment thresholds these are even more complicated and uh usually the threshold is equal to the maximum health pool of the monster or the player character so bosses have very heavily reduced ailment threshold due to the mass amounts of life making it possible to inflict ailments on bosses but it's obviously very, very hard to freeze bosses. So, for example, to get a 15% shock effect on an enemy, you generally need to deal a shocking hit or a crit, which deals around 5% of the enemy's total life as a single hit. And that makes it that um, if you have, for example, a very fast hitting skill, let's say Ball Lightning, Ball Lightning would have a hard time shocking the boss unless you're doing very, very big chunk hits. Um, and that means that, for example, something that hits slow but very hard like discharge would have a much easier time of creating ailments and, and bypassing the threshold scaling ailment damage is a viable way of building a character and you often hear people using bleed slam ignite fireball and that just means that they use the ailment damage as their main damage instead of the like hit impact damage uh ailment is considered damage over time and they are um like ailment damage is considered damage over time and ailment effects are not considered damage over time so for example like shock shock doesn't do any damage it just makes other things do more damage and then we have chill effect freeze effect and non-damaging elements and non-damaging elements would be shock freeze uh etc brittle we'll go into the more advanced ones later so damaging ones we have uh ignite critical hits with fire skills always ignite if you're using fireball and that fireball crits you always ignite then you have hits with fire skills chance to ignite you have cost causes enemies to take fire damage over time and we have damage based on the size of the hit so um here hit damage is important for the damage and then non-damaging elements we have shock which critical hits from lightning damage always shock see a trend here um hits with lightning skills and chance to shock we also have causes the enemy to take increased damage <clears throat> so if you shock something any hit coming after that not the same hit that caused it but every hit coming after that will do more damage um, and that would also cause you to get bigger shocks on the enemy because it is now taking more damage. Magnitude of damage taken is based on the same, on the size of the hit against enemy ailment threshold. So obviously hard to shock, very high life. And then, uh, yeah, and shock and stun as well. And then chill, cold damage will, uh, always chill. And then it slows down the enemy action speed and that's based on the size of the hit and the ail enemy threshold. And there are things that... Um, I think they're called Pain Seeker, which will, for example, let you do the effect as if you dealt more damage. You're not actually dealing more damage, but let's say that you are dealing 500,000 damage, but you actually need a million damage done to bypass the shock or the threshold, then to something like Pain Seeker, where it's like um, the, the effect counts as if you dealt 300% more damage, can then bypass the threshold easier. Very, very strong. Uh, we have freeze and critical hits with cold damage have a hundred percent chance to freeze and uh, that reduces action speed by a hundred percent so it's basically frozen and the duration of the freeze is based on the monster life pool so if it's less than five percent of max life no freeze five percent zero point three and if you do as much as fifty percent or more of the max life it's frozen for three seconds and uh, these are also considered to be frozen and chilled then we have sap this replaces shock and he uses an item or keystone granting sap. Uh, causes enemies to deal less damage based on the magnitude. And up 20% less damage 
still can be good on bosses um if you have a good way of like consistently bypassing the thresholds and very very like good for tanking scorch replaces ignite when using an item or a keystone granting scorch and it lowers enemy elemental resist sometimes can be really really good if you are doing um builds that are maybe doing fire damage but using le focus and you don't care about the ailment and you have something else where you want to like scorch from a, a different thing not using LA focus. It's so it's generally when you don't care about like the damage over time or the ignite. Brittle replaces chill, chill and freeze when using an item or a keystone using brittle and causes enemies to take increased critical strikes up to 15%. Uh, this is taken so it's additive to your final value. So 55% chance to crit and 10% brittle is a 65% total crit chance against a brittle enemy. So it's very, very strong. Right. So non-elemental elements, physical, physical damage over time is not an ailment. And uh, it, it isn't necessarily bleed. Like not all physical damage over time is bleed. Um, that's it pretty confusing thing but quite a lot of them are all bleeds are physical dots but not all physical dots are bleeds and uh, it deals physical damage over time generally only found on spells like exsanguinate and corrupting fever and then um, it's scaled with damage over time multiplier which is global to every damage over time then you have specific ones like physical damage over time you have cold damage over time for cold um, increased damage increased physical damage that is global would also scale it and then Trap, mine, and totem damage if it's applied by those. And then bleed is a physical ailment and it deals physical damage over time. It can only be applied via attack skills and damage is based on the size of the hit. And then scale with increased damage, dot multiplier, fist dot multiplier, bleeding damage, and increased physical damage. Next up we have chaos. And gotta remember that all poison damage is chaos, but not all chaos damage is poison. Um, it deals chaos damage over time, and uh, it's applied via spells like Essence Drain, Blight, Death's Oath, scaled with damage over time multiplier, again, global, does every dot, chaos damage over time multiplier, increased damage, increased chaos damage, and anything that has like the word multiplier in it, good. Multiplier, always more better. So, um, if you're, if you're like, if it's between like, say, 20% more multiplier versus 50% increase, or 50% increased damage, then mul multiplier is generally always better. Poison deals chaos damage over time, and uh, it's applied generally with attacks. There are some items that allow spell damage to poison on hit, and uh, you can see they're very, very similar and easy to scale as well. Are there any questions? Any questions pertaining to this episode? Like how to turn off the sun, maybe? What is reduced? So reduce is the opposite of increased. So incre increases and reductions. So it's the same like if you were getting 20% increased and then 20% reduced, they cancel each other out. How much did that shirt cost? Like 10 bucks. Yeah, I don't think shock stuns. I don't know why I said that. I thought I forgot something and read it in chat. Like I was just reading a line from chat. And then space out. Are there any instances where increases better than more? If you, for some reason, had nothing else, say you have 0% increased damage, 0% more damage, and it's the choice between 20% increase and 10% more, then yes. Like more multipliers are generally always better. More is always better. Is literally just like the literally first part of the game. Like for example, if you had elemental overload at the start, 60% increased damage versus elemental overload, elemental overload is worse. Like even as long as you have one like other increased multiplier and then more, more is better. How do you know which seals typically shotgun? Generally, the guide would tell you. 20% more equals 80% increased on average. Sure, it's not a terrible rule of thumb, but it does vary a bit. 
Am I able to inflict both poison and chaos damage over time to an enemy? Yes. I don't know, Araki. Gotta wait for patch notes previous. No working. Are increases applied before multipliers? Yeah, I think multipliers is done at the end and it multiplies everything. Right, my professor. Yes, both physical and chaos can inflict poison. I think we're going to round it off there and... Oh, will the minion still increase damage if you use the minion skill mod from Gusty? Yes, that works. Minion deal increased damage if you use the minion skill recently from Gastia affect the player with spiritual aid and is it amplified by darkness and throne? Yes, it will be. Okay, yes. Uh, a word about increased damage taken. So sometimes you will have... Uh, fuck, I wish I had an Inquisitor. Do I have an Inquisitor? Okay, so sometimes there will be enemies take increased damage. This on its own is a more multiplier. Um, so say here, nearby enemies take 16% increased elemental damage. Having one of those is basically a more multiplier. If we have like, uh, say we have nearby enemies take 16% increased elemental damage and nearby enemies take 10% increased damage. Both of those aren't more multipliers, but having one of these basically counts as a more multiplier. So this is an insanely strong stat even though it is worded as increased. But because it's coming from a different source, you can think of this as more similar to a more multiplier. It's a lot stronger. Like, this would not be the same as getting 16% spell damage. It's a lot stronger than that. They sum up separately. But we are going to call it there, especially because I am actually dying in the heat. So I'm going to try to open more windows. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed Path of Exile 102. We are going to do... Um, I hope Khan is here. He's not replying on Discord. Is he... He's supposed to be here in 30 minutes. And then we're... Oops. We're supposed to do a uh, lab running episode. Uh, if not, I'm going to be doing Battle Royale. But uh, remember, there are more lessons. And uh, I posted everything on Twitter. So thanks for watching. Sub if you like the video. And uh, I think we have t-shirts on shop.sysrain.com for those that like it. But... More importantly, try to die in the heat less than I do.